Taxpayers in Maine, according to the National Priorities Project, excuse me, taxpayers in Pennsylvania, have paid $17.4 billion for the cost of the Iraq occupation through 2007. That same amount of money could have provided 4.3 million people in your state with total free health care. 4.3 million people. How many people live in your state? Five million? Eleven million. Actually, approximately 12.4 at this point. 12.4 million. Okay. So a third of the people. A third of the people. Just from one year. Well, where I live in Maine, our Democratic governor just announced two, three weeks ago that we were $195 million short in the state budget. You probably know that the textile industry from Maine is gone. The shoe industry from Maine is gone. They're even closing down paper mills in Maine now because they're cutting the timber and taking it out of the country to be processed outside the country where there's cheaper labor. And so the number one employer, the top employer in our state today, is the military industrial complex. But because of our fiscal crisis, the governor just announced that he was defunding mental health services in the state of Maine. And they just announced huge cuts in education funding across the state. And two nights ago, three nights ago, I went to a meeting in a little town, working class town of Woolwich, where two parents asked me to go to a meeting with them because the uh, Maine National Army National Guard was coming to do a presentation to parents where they're coming into the schools and doing indoctrination inside the schools in classrooms for six weeks in this school, 12 weeks in another school that we know of. And then when they did the presentation, they said last year they uh, visited 47 schools in the state and 4,700 kids were brought through this program. And then they take them out for a fun weekend trip to one of the boot camps, of the Army National Guard boot camps, for a weekend of fun and frolic, where they basically run them through a boot camp experience. These are seventh graders, by the way, that they're taking out there. Not high school kids, but seventh graders. The school is happy to have the National Guard come in because they're laying off teachers. And they can't afford to provide people to uh, spend all the uh, time they need to with the kids. So the Army National Guard is essentially becoming like a substitute teacher in the school, in, in our state, and I'm, I'm sure many other states across the country. The old uh, line of many Democrats was, well, we can have guns and we can have butter. But the butter is melted. And in many communities, the butter is gone. You all have heard, I've heard, I know, former Republican President Dwight Eisenhower, the World War II general, his famous words in 1961, in his concluding speech to the American people, when he warned us to beware of the power of the military industrial complex, that he said was gaining undue influence in the halls of Congress. In fact, one gentleman tonight reminded me to make sure you say that originally it was supposed to be the military industrial congressional com uh, 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 complex, but that Eisenhower staffers was worried that it was too over the top, and so they dropped the line of Congress out of it. And Eisenhower concluded by saying that in the end, every dollar that is spent on weapons is a theft from those who hunger and for those, from those who are in need in our society. So with all that said, what is the solution? How do we get out from behind this eight ball that we're standing behind today? Well, I would like to propose to you that in all my years as an organizer, almost 30 years now, I have never ever seen the American people listening as hard as they're listening today. I don't know about here, but in Maine, people are really worried about jobs. People are talking about jobs. They're talking about their future. They're worried about their kids and their grandkids. 
They're worried about who's going to pay to fix the potholes in our roads in Maine that are getting so bad now that they're saying they're going to have to essentially go and strip and rebuild the roads from scratch. But if they don't have money to fill potholes, how are they going to rebuild the roads? The bridges are falling apart in Maine. How are we going to fix those? And people are talking about it, and people are worried. And they keep saying, if you listen closely, what are we going to do? The politicians, they say, the Republicans and the Democrats, are not really offering us a way out. Well, I would like to humbly submit that that's our job now, to come forward with a transformative vision in this country, to offer people a direction where we can be going, to offer a call that not only the peace movement, but the environmental movement, and the labor movement, and the social justice movement can organize around and come together on. And that is conversion of the military industrial complex. The time has come for a sustainable technology revolution in America. We're all told over and over again that climate change and global warming are so severe that if we do not act immediately and essentially change our, 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 our the way we live in America, and we do it immediately, that we are destroying the future. And there will be essentially no future for those that come after us. So how do we do that? Well, with your tax dollars that are today used to prepare for endless war, why can't we, at all these military production facilities across America, and in communities where there are problems of jobs, and that people need jobs, why can't we build a solar society? Just today, when I'm flying in on that little propeller plane landing at the Allentown Airport, it's a beautiful sunny day out there. And I'm noticing the legions and legions of rooftops just bare. What if we, to tomorrow, force the Congress of the United States to say that every house and business in America had to have at least a solar water heater on them? Can you imagine the jobs created in America in research and development and design and manufacturing and installation and repair of a solar society, reducing the amount of oil we, we use, reducing the effects of global warming, putting people to work all over this country. Can you imagine? Can you imagine where I live in Bath, Maine, at a shipyard that is building Aegis destroyers? And if that shipyard goes under, there's nothing. People are worried about it going under. There's always talk about, are we going to get the next contract? Because even the Pentagon, believe it or not, is running out of money. Well. What they did in Copenhagen, Denmark, was they converted a shipyard, and now today they're the world's leading producer of windmills. And they're selling windmills all over the world. Why can't we, in military production facilities in the United States, with your tax dollars, 